We're talking about dad jokes. Ready for this? The British Psychology Society wrote, uh, put out an article that had a whole bunch of research behind it, and I'll read some of the punchlines here. How are we to make sense of the apparent popularity of dad jokes, given that they are explicitly said to be unfunny? Even those definitions of the genre that do not specifically say the word unfunny include similar slights like lame or hackneyed or embarrassingly bad. (laughs) While virtually all dad jokes are puns, uh, however, it is not all puns that are dad jokes. And at this point, the article goes in and talks about how puns are often used to make very blue off-color jokes. Those are definitely not dad jokes. Dad jokes are the bland, vanilla hyper inoffensive things that, uh, you know, the comedians we were talking about before, they don't do these sorts of things. Right. But their dad jokes are still all around. Dad jokes are, this is back to the article, by contrast, pure, terminally inoffensive puns. This is what makes them wholesome and appropriate for dads to tell around their kids. It's also what makes dad jokes so susceptible to accusations of being stupid, lame, and unfunny. Yet, Telling a joke that is so lame or unfunny that it doesn't deserve to be told out loud is itself a violation of the norms of joke telling. And this can, in turn, make the dad joke funny. In this sense, dad jokes can be considered a type of anti-humor or humor derived from violating the forms and norms of humor production itself. Okay, so this, I I geeked out on this hardcore. (laughs) Um... The, the way that what he's saying is the way that this works is that dad jokes, you know, it starts with the little kid that you're just making jokes that are on a level they can understand, that they're not going to be offensive, that it's an easy sort of thing. But then as the kids get older and they get to be teenagers, I have three of them, so I know this for a fact, there is a tipping point where you are no longer funny anymore, dad, and stop making these same jokes. But dad doesn't stop making those jokes And what's really fun is they actually get funnier for dad, but I'll get into that in a minute. (laughs) The article talks about, and there's been a bunch of research on this. Yasef Panksep uh, did a bunch of research with rats showing this. Two second version. We know about rough and tumble play, which is what it's often called in psychology with small children, usually dad engaging with child, physically rough housing, wrestling, that sort of thing. And we know that that play helps the child to learn all sorts of things in a precognitive fashion. They're not thinking through it. You can't reason these ideas out with the kid. They just have to experience it physically. And what it teaches them is things like, um, just because I'm uncomfortable doesn't mean I'm in pain. You know, just because I'm in pain doesn't mean I have to cry. Sometimes uh, a little bit of discomfort is actually a lot of fun that, you know, that sort of rough housing, where is the most fun when you're rough housing? It's right on the edge of pain. It's right yeah. It's right where you're almost pushing it too far. And as a parent, the things that you can teach the kid, like literally is like, here's the line, don't cross the line. And we can get as close as you want to that line, but as soon as you cross that, when you kick dad where you shouldn't kick dad, we're done playing. The fun stops, right? And so kids learn, oh, okay, if I wanna keep having fun, I don't cross that line. And there's been all kinds of studies linking that sort of play with or let me put it the other way, linking the absence of that sort of play with um, all kinds of negative outcomes in teen years and later in life, including things like a uh, tendency toward domestic abuse and drug abuse and like all kinds of not graduating, all these different things. And we believe it's because, because you would think if dad was rough with the kid, why wouldn't that then lead to the kid being rough with the wife? And the answer is, because the kid that dad played with roughly, the kid knows there's a line and you don't cross that line. And um, anyway, so all that is an aside because that's what's relevant here. This is when the article comes back. So we, we know the way physical rough play with a child educates them. We think this is what's going on with dad jokes. At first blush, fathers' more aggressive style of physical play and their teasing style of humor with their children might seem cruel, but that would be missing the point. By continually pushing and challenging their children, fathers' style of rough and tumble play supports their child's physical and cognitive development in important ways. While teaching them to regulate their behavior and emotions, ideally fathers' rougher style of joking, where they're making jokes that the child finds 
uh, offensively bad and embarrassing. That's the whole point is you make the dad joke in front of the friends and the friends look at the kid and go, wow, your dad is lame, <laughs> right? So we're saying, uh, teaching them to regulate the behaviors and emotions. Ideally, father's rougher style of joking fulfills a similar function by teasing, teasingly striking at their children's egos and emotions without teetering over into bullying. Fathers build their children's resilience and train them to withstand minor attacks and bouts of negative emotion without getting worked up or acting out, teaching them impulse control and emotional regulation. In light of this, it is worth considering dad jokes as a pedagogical tool, I love that word, pedagogical tool, that may serve a beneficial function for the very children who roll their eyes at them. By continually telling their children jokes that are so bad that they're embarrassing, fathers may push their children's limits for how much embarrassment they can handle. They show their children that embarrassment isn't fatal, and for a child who is approaching or has entered adolescence, which appears to be a sensitive period for socio, uh, social, sociocultural processing, this is an immensely valuable lesson. In this sense, dad jokes may have a positive pedagogical effect, toughening up their kids who are begrudgingly exposed to them. <laughs> there you go. That, is, that was a, a study from the British Psychological Society. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, any big thoughts so on you, this? You a, you a dad jokes guy then? Unintentionally you, you literally, so. Literally, yeah. I, I, yes. I, I have other forms of humor that I like, but my kids will quickly attest to the fact that I have <laughs> never held back a dad joke. Not a single wow. time. Wow. Because that's what I was wondering was how many people, I mean, I see them, you know, there's like a Instagram account with them or something like that. Oh, but yeah. I don't really like know anybody that like tells them that's because actually to their kids. You are the I'm one that one tells the one. them. Yeah. But I'm friends with other dads. Like, uh -huh. I don't know. Well, but it's, the, it's not, it's not, it's not like the list of ja dad jokes. Sure, Here's the dad joke. It's, sure. It's, it's a general sense of humor. and it, Yeah. When you're, when you you're. still think, you still think you're funny to them. Which no, <laughs> no, I know I'm not funny. To or that. no, I'm saying that's like, what he's. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. The, the the dad who thinks he's funny, but right? The kid, but that's the point. Like part of what's fun about it as an adult, it goes from being I'm entertaining you, to now I'm entertaining me. At your expense, because, a little bit, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm going to make a joke and watch you get uncomfortable, and then I'm going to think that's funny. Uh, yeah, that's it. Is so much fun. Yeah, I guess the part that I went to that I guess I, cause I just felt like, I mean, it does relate more to me is the, um, the physical play yeah. with kids. Like that was really cool to see that kind of written up. Cause I'm like that. I have two boys now, six and four, and I'm definitely, you know, always wrestling with them. Yep. I've had cuts on my face from my, my younger <laughs> one in here. He, he's, he needs to learn to line a little more, but yep. he's still pretty young. But um, anyway, so that was cool to read and kind of the thought process behind that. And then <laughs> It's another thing. My wife doesn't love that, but she kind of gets it. That's like pretty normal. The teasing, like that I was, will tease my kids. She can't understand that. And maybe right. like I should watch it a little more, but I do kind of tease them or like, you just like poke at them or something. Yeah. Or, like something I know that was bothering them. Or now my older one has started like to say he likes a girl or whatever. And I'll tease them about nice. that. Like, so <laughs> I don't know, just to see that like written in yeah. an article for me, was kind of cool. Like, it's backed I do by that. science. Yes. You're allowed to do it. And in fact, you need to do it. So like for you, you, like, you related to the dad jokes part. I kind of related to that part more, but either way in this, you know, I thought it was pretty cool for sure. And, and we should point out, like it says, you don't cross over that line into bullying. That's not what we're talking about. And in the same way that roughhousing is not the same as, as beating your children. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about play, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it's, but there's definitely that where you put, you know, push the line with them a little bit, yep. you know, sometimes I'm trying, I am trying to, kind of physically and mentally toughen them up, but obviously to a point, right. You know, an age appropriate level. Yeah. Yeah. But like yeah. that little bit, or like if one kid, now my younger one is a little more scared of like heights. Like, yep. so I pull him up in the air, or like throw him up. He gets scared. So those kind of things, I don't go overdo it, but I will do like a little one with them yeah. just to kind of like, I don't want to say needle him a little bit, but just to kind of like get him to break out of that. Well, and it so, also helps be, to associate fun. But it's okay. With that challenge. Yes. Would you, do you have thoughts? The, uh, no, that was that was good. I was thinking more about the dad jokes again too, because it, it made me think about dad. Obviously, yeah. And I'm thinking like I remember him as like legitimately never. I never finding him funny. Like no matter what. <laughs> like I just didn't find him funny. Yep. Like, but really, it was just like that. I'm, I have like a just a like a memory of like the teenage years thinking yeah. thinking that. True. So here I am reading this, and it's like, well, he probably was a little bit funny. Yep. It's just that he would say stuff or do something or do something with his shoes or his socks. Like, and it would just be, 
it was just because of my age and the, you know, just all of what was, what was mentioned. It here. was because you were learning the lessons that you needed to learn. It, yes. It was like at my expense. <laughs> yep. so like it was like, Oh, like he's I'm just, cur- he's cr- shoes he's and so socks. Like cringe right what now. did he do with his shoes and socks? <laughs> I'm trying to start wearing black socks all the time for a little while. Yeah, there, he started repping the black socks. <laughs> nice, like with sneakers, yeah. cutoffs all the time. Oh, that's black awful. socks with sneakers and cutoffs all the time oh, at the gym. Wow, <laughs> that was standard less, uniform. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's less like less like the joke. Yeah, he wasn't trying to be funny. He was, <laughs> like, he was yeah. serious about that. He, he would, worked out better in the cutoff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like he would. He coached some of our team, like basketball and baseball teams, like up until. Like 12 and 13. So yeah. right when this stuff kind of started, like right when you start noticing this. Yeah. And like the way that I think he would hype us up would be <laughs> in almost like intentionally funny. And I'd like, I'd like look at my friend Mike and yep. be like, dude, like he's the worst. Yeah, he's the worst. <laughs> he was doing a perfect job then. Exactly. That That's yeah. funny awesome. looking at it that way. Because it makes me look back too. Like sometimes dad wasn't ever like cracking He'd a joke like, really. Like that Yeah, but like, he had, he had some silliness to him yeah. that looking back, I didn't, I don't know. I've seen more looking back than I remember like in the moment. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's fantastic. Very cool. Well, you get to go home and tell some dad jokes, <laughs> learn some. That's going to be on my mind now, actually. A duck walks into a bar. <laughs> Does he got any grapes? <laughs> Do you hear the rest of it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Duck walks into a bar, says he got any grapes. And the bartender says, no, we don't have any grapes and we don't serve ducks. Get out of here. Does it again the next day. You had any rapes? No. And I told you yesterday, we don't serve ducks. Don't come in here. Third time, duck comes into the bar. You got any rapes? Bartender says, no. And if you come in here one more time, I'm going to nail your bill to this bar. <laughs> the next day, the duck walks into the bar. He goes, you got any nails? Bartender goes, wait, what? No. You got any rapes? <laughs> That's it. That's the whole joke. <laughs> the only That's joke great. I can ever remember. It's terrible. <laughs> That's the one that sticks with you. That's it. That's a dad level joke that I got. Amazing. <laughs> some of them, they are in examples in the um, the actual like main article. Yeah, they yeah. have some. Yeah, they're pretty awful. <laughs> yes. <laughs>